Welcome. This is Asia Documentation, Jenkins Documentation Office Hours Asia. It's the 2nd of August. Thanks everyone for being here. Topics for today, Google Summer of Code, Contributor Spotlight, uh, and Version Docs. I think we'll just drop that off for today. Nothing to discuss there. And 462 is we should talk about that. And then simplifying plugin maintenance, a case study. This is one that, that I'll defer it to another time because I want some other people to attend who are actually interested in this example plugin. Okay. So, so I did this case study and Darren Pope and I may use it as a, as a new, new video series. Oh, yeah. There are, there are things that we can learn by looking at plugins and saying, hey, life would be simpler for the maintainers if they did this. So let's let's take our topics and we'll go ahead. So Google Summer of Code project. So did you mean to delete that from the I'll I'll leave oh, it here, but we just won't touch, touch it, it today. Yeah, okay. exactly. Gotcha. We'll, we'll just skip it. So 26th of August is the end of Google Summer of Code. And the I've still got to show this Jenkins info. Okay, here's the old statistics site with its graphs. Okay, and its graphs okay. are things like, let's look at this one, statistics in detail. That is oh, just yes. very, very painful to see. But oh, then I think it's the, kind of pretty interesting designs. Right, very right. Abstract pretty art. abstract in, art. Exactly. Now, if we instead... Not informative, but... Right, right, and that exactly that. Not terribly useful unless you download the raw data and and carry the raw data to some other tool that you then use to rework it to something useful. Yeah. So here's new.stats.jenkins.io with a much better look and feel. It integrates right into the the Jenkins site. Notice the top menu bar, the bottom, oh, the yeah. bottom, the the footer at the bottom. And uh -huh. when we look at statistics in detail, the statistic, the graphs are oh, very readable, no very understandable. And I can do things like, okay, so let's look at weekly information here. Show me the top, the five, top plugins with greater than 2,500 installations. And now I can adjust the scale by saying, show oh. me, show me things here the it's just a much better site for those of us who need to care about how is Jenkins doing, right? right. Well, how's, how's it's, how is the health of the Jenkins project? Uh, as a comparison question, how is the health of the Jenkins project? So here we look at this graph since 2008, we had this nice near linear growth until about 2018. Then it roughly doubled its growth for a couple of years till hmm. about, yeah, maybe 18 months. And then it flattened out and it stayed relatively flat, right? We're not seeing, we're seeing numbers in the range of 300,000. And we've had that now since, so for two or three years. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's an uncomfortable piece of data. That's, oh, we're not growing like we used to. Now let's look at an overlay that looks at, compares the total jobs over time. And here we see this nice green line that does this linear growth since 2018, at least, mm -hmm. and just continues. Mm -hmm. So we're, we continue to grow number of jobs, even if controller count is not increasing. So on the one hand, that means we're not getting as many new controller installations as we hope, but the ones we have continue to expand and broaden their usage. Is the possibility that the controllers have gotten more powerful? Also, so that they can do more on the same one. It, it is, and it's also that some controller configurations, by default, do not report their statistics back. Oh yeah. And so it's also entirely possible that we're getting controllers that that just don't report themselves, and that's a choice. That's a perfectly fair choice for the controller owner to make saying, Hey, I don't want to report my, my statistics back to the, right back to the central location. Right. So, right. so it, it's not, not unreasonable to say that there is probably some 
of this tapering of this flattening of the curve that is due to controllers not reporting. Uh huh. So nice, very nice graph. And all this thanks to Chris Stern and Shlomo Dahan, who is the Google Summer of Code contributor. The, the project has gone great. Thanks to Hervé Lemur, who, who's taken care of the infrastructure work. And recently we've had actually some help from Damien Duportal. So oh. grateful to all of them. And, and it makes a great story that this site is looking great and growing well. On the next story, it's Contributor Spotlight. And here we've got to look at Darren Pope. So Darren's Spotlight was published just yesterday. And it talks about some of his history, where what brought him to Jenkins and why he contributes and how long he's been here, et cetera. Huh. And Darren is now the, I think Darren is the 17th spotlight that we've published. Three, six, nine, 12, 15, 16. Yeah, he's the 17th on average every two weeks. So we're well huh. past um, six months and headed towards nine months of continually being able to highlight a different contributor every two weeks to, to express our gratitude to them. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So next topic is the Jenkins 2.462 change log. And this one, the best way to look at it is to go here to the Jenkins site. It's actually been merged now. This one is an important release because it's a security release. Ah. And the security release will in now the details of the release won't be made available until the until the release itself is published right so we don't we don't disclose uh -huh. vulnerabilities until we have until we have a, a fix. fix for the vulnerability but yeah. here's the change log and even without the security fix there are a bunch of very interesting changes happening like commons files upload, commons file upload, removing some buttons from the UI, uh, restyling things, uh, JSON parsing performance improvements, all sorts of cool things that have arrived here. ASM has been moved out of core. So, so um. we're on ongoing projects to steadily reduce the footprint of Jenkins core and make it easier for Jenkins core maintainers to keep it healthy and up to date. Oh, cool. Yeah. So this one is, is in good shape and the security release. Now the, the security release was just announced a day ago by Daniel Beck. So uh, very grateful to Daniel for his work on that. And I'm the release lead, so next Wednesday I'll be busy. Cool. And those were all and the topics is, we had. It, oh, go ahead. How about will the documentation reflect new features and it will. The security fix? Yeah, and the security will, so fix um, doesn't change anything. It will if usually it does not, sure. but if it does, what happens yeah. is that Daniel will apply changes to the to the change log that's been merged he will apply an, an incremental change that adds a note to the top that says security fix was in this here's the link to the security details okay and if there was something that in the security fix that broke functionality then that will be described in detail in the security vulnerability report in the advisory okay but I was saying like something like the console can be downloaded. This documentation tell people how to do that now. Yeah, so I'm not sure I understood your question. Say that again, Meg. Oh, like I saw features like I can now um, download the console output, I think. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. So how I, do I, I do that? Where do right. I find so that? what what's happened here is it's moved to the app bar. So the button that used to be on the left hand side has now moved to the top right. And if, if a user wants to see more about that, all they do is click this hyperlink to the pull request and it will show them before and after screenshots. Okay, does that mean, do we have screenshots that need to be replaced then in the docs? I'm not aware of any, but it's a good question. Okay. Let me put a note. 
that's that's a good one so are there are there screenshots that that need to be updated based on 2.462.1 or previous and sometime this will not be i mean do we expect people to always go back to the chain i mean somewhere the main doc should tell them how to do this without not necessarily before release but soon well right. and and the main docs typically don't tell people how to do that level of detail right okay. click click on the link click on the link view as plain text is pretty is is would be uncommonly level of detail okay good question Anything else? Nope, just curious. All right. So the next piece, this simplifying plugin maintenance, we'll hold that for another time. What I've done is I've taken a look at an example plugin and then identified some things that could be done to make life easier for the plugin maintainer. The intent uh -huh. here is not necessarily to improve anything for the user, just to keep things simpler for the plugin maintainer so that they don't have to spend unnecessary time doing plugin maintenance. Right. We'll, we'll work through it in detail and capture the video. And then Darren Pope and I may use this for a, a, an even better production video as part of Hacktoberfest. Fabulous. Great, that's it. And that's all she wrote? That's it, thank you. Well, cool.